shout out to our sponsors at IconBet. Open source, decentralized gaming, no deposits, play straight from your wallet. IconBet, made by the players, for the players. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Eye on Icon. This is the episode where we go around the ecosystem interviewing our builders. However, today it's a little bit different. Instead of interviewing our builders, we're going to go around and interview some of our NFT artists. So we've seen that really take off with Crafts Launch. And what better than to actually spend time and learn from the people who are creating art or uh, different products via the craft store and um, going to sell it. So we sit down with one of the new projects that is going to be launching soon, Pixels with Geo and Brian. And um, definitely listen to that. Uh, it's great, uh, great to hear uh, Brian's experience and where what he's done in the past as well. You definitely saw me, uh, you know, turn into an instant fan. And then, of course, the project itself is is a lot of fun. So definitely, that is great. Then we hear from another artist, Sophie, who has released some of her artworks on OpenSea and was uh, sold out, and she's bringing some of her uh, collections to craft and finally we sit down with the creator of pink punks and we chat with him about its success and what drew him to that and why he kicked off that idea and what what drove him to launch on craft so definitely a different episode but i think everyone should enjoy it i know i had a ton of fun interviewing all these different people who are uh, you know creative and bringing it all to craft on icon so once again let's take a listen and enjoy i hope you enjoy it if you if you like this as well and you feel we should do this once in every few months that's great let us know join the telegram chat and um, you know discord rooms and share some of these ideas with us we're very keen to listen to everyone who listens to the show and bring content they want to hear so once again um, take a listen we'll chat soon Okay, and with us today now, we have Gio and Brian, and they've come on the show to talk to us about their new project that is going to be launching on Craft, and this is a little bit different, so I'm excited, and I don't know much about it, so I want to learn a lot more, and we all know this as the delightful little pixels, it's called. Have I got that right, Gio? Yep, that's exactly right. P-I-C-X-A-L-S, yep. Okay, excellent. And Brian, how are you today? Pretty good. Excellent. Uh, Brian, I believe you are the artist that draws these and created this. Uh, you could say that, and Gio is the... Um, the art director. Feed, feedback, yeah. <laughs> art director. <laughs> Excellent. I don't have an artistic bone in my body, but for some reason I can direct art really well. Great. Yeah, it's been a good collaboration so far. Excellent. So, so tell us about the project. Tell us um, how it came to be. Tell us the story. Sure. So... Um, Brian, you know, once craft came out, you know, people were like, oh, cool, I can express my creativity. And so they started putting up different things. And, you know, a lot of this happened in the uh, Republic channel and, you know, like Crypt Addicts putting up his Crypt Addict aliens and all this kind of stuff, which are really cool. Mm. And so great place for people to express their creative side. And Brian actually is a professional artist. Um, you know, I won't say what he's worked on or anything that's up to him, but you know, he, he's a professional artist and he drew up these, you know, square animal kind of, uh, figurines and was putting them up on craft. And I was like, you know what, this is a really cool kind of look, you know, it's, it's different. It's a different kind of style, cute, like, you know, cartoony, but also, you know, his animals looked really realistic, which is awesome. And so it was like, okay, well, what can we, can we make something of this? And, you know, obviously I, I've always been into NFTs from crypto kitties. You know, I didn't, I didn't get into any of them. I just have been watching them and, and, you know, which is my fault for not getting into any of them <laughs> according to, you know, how the punks are doing these days. Um, but like, I was always like interested in creating NFTs and, you know, like, but not really just art, but actually like sort of a, a gamification, if you will, like building something where people will, will be interested in your NFT more than just as a piece of art. And so, you know, I approached Brian, I said, Hey, you know, I honestly, I've had, you know, my code for the horses done. Um, and where it really is a, a great kind of genetic system where it can um, build anything really based upon randomization um, and generate an image with that randomization 
And since uh, Ibris and I, you know, haven't collaborated yet on the horses because they were working on their 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 project uh, Gangster Bet, um, which I'm assuming you'll talk to them or something in the future is also a really cool project. Um, you know, so I was like, well, it's just sitting there unused. So why don't we utilize it for something? And he was like, cool, I like the idea. And, you know, and so now we're collaborating. And, you know, what what's the idea is that these these pixels are going to start off as eggs and they're all going to be randomized, you know, uh, by the, the by the application, by the program. So it's all going to have random colors, random patterns, um, all that kind of stuff. And then you'll you'll purchase a pixel egg. And then from that point, you'll then send that egg off to the hatchery or you can trade it and sell it. You know, it's, it's all, you know, obviously in the economy of NFT. Um, but if you want to actually hatch the egg, you'll send it off to the hatchery. And then after a certain lockup period, you'll be able to reclaim a pixel. And then you'll the software again will randomly generate a pixel, uh, which is an animal kind of, you know, type, you know, creature and send it back to you and burn the egg. So, you know, the whole concept was start off with an egg. You know, you don't know what you got. You know, submit it to, to be hatched. You get it back as a baby animal creature. And from there, who knows? You know, obviously the future is, is unknown with everything. And, you know, we may build a game off of it. We mm. may build other things that will be cool. I don't want to really say right now. But, you know, really the concept started there. And that's kind of where we're going with it. Cool. I, I guess that's what I was curious about. So, yes, uh, the egg, I, I love the idea. You send it off and then it hatches and obviously what you get um, will be random. But post that, I was keen to know, is there going to be some kind of upgrade ability, you know, or is it is it going to stay like that? So I guess you're not re ready to reveal that kind of information yet. I'm, go ahead, Brian. You, you want to talk? I feel like um, our growth will be based off the feedback we get from the community. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. So give the people what they want kind of thing. Yep. As yeah. we might be see it. Yeah, and we already have ideas for future. So obviously we're going to call these generations. Generation Zero is a farm-based theme. Um, so it's going to be uh, farm animals. Um, and then, you know, we'll have Generation 1, 2, 3, whatever, you know, and they'll all be different theme-based creatures. Mm-hmm. Love it. So Love this it. an ongoing project. It's not going to just be, you know, but we're not going to, again, we're not going to go back and revisit a theme. So those, you know, that theme, that farm animals theme is going to have a, a set number of, of uh, pixels, which will be 696 pixels. Um, and I can just describe a little bit about that. We're going to have common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and then one of one. Um, and I'm not going to reveal exactly, you know, what the animals are yet or anything. And, and, stuff like that but you know obviously that's a standard system of having different rarities mm -hmm. um the rarities will vary in uh, color and uh, i guess accessories would be a way of putting it um and then also there will be a one of one which is literally a one of one meaning it's not going to be an animal that exists or is like any of the other 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 pixel animals yeah yeah love it Cool. So, Brian, um, Gia says, you know, uh, in the background, I'd asked a little bit about you and you told me you're an artist. And do you plan on um, uh, from this uh, releasing some other pieces of work you've worked on that it's not necessarily, you know, a, a, a gamification aspect of it, just kind of your artwork? Well, the point came from I was in the Republic chat as well, and everybody was talking about NFTs, NFTs, this and that. And you saw it all over Twitter. It's just, it was, that's all that's on Twitter right now. It seems. Yeah. So I said, I'll, I look at the site. I always check whenever there's a new aspect of Icon Network comes online. I'll always have a look and see what it is. I might not always interact with it, but I'll check it out. And I was having a look, and some of the stuff was pretty good. I was like, well, it's, it's basically it's built for artists, but people are like monetizing it to flip uh, NFTs, etc. So I said, I'll just do something to see how the platform works and see how long it takes me. So I did the, the green crocodile and um, just to run it through the, the pipeline, say how to how to mint, mm. how to make one of one or five of five or whatever. And I did five of five of that, I think. And uh, people liked them. So then I did a snake because I was trying to figure out if I was going to carry on with it, um, what, 
what kind of style I would go for because I quite like the crocodile as well. Uh, I did a snake and it looked abysmal, but it's still it's still up there. But it was a good way of figuring out what I don't like. And then I was just posting them in, in the chat. And then so I think it was Doctor asked for a dog. Oh no, GX asked for a dog or a wolf. So I did a dog and Doctor bought it. So then I got a message from Christopher saying, "Can you do a leopard?" I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, sure." And I think this was like this day last week. And then I said, "I'll do it tonight because I'm in work." And then Geo messaged me an hour later saying, uh, "I want a dragon," because we previously had a conversation. I worked on a show called The Dragon Prince, which is on uh, Netflix. Oh yeah, I and love that show. Okay, wow. Oh yeah. yeah. So there's um, the egg. The dragon comes from the egg. So then he said, "Oh, I want an egg." And then of course his his the wheels started turning in his head. As soon as he said that, I realized what he was, where he was going with it, and then this became about this way. Yeah, um, awesome. I actually work, the studio I work at now is actually called Icon Creative, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> Match made in heaven, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, I don't know where I was going with that, a bit of a tangent. What uh, was the question? No, no, I just was, you answered it. I was curious if you were going to put up other artwork. And oh, yeah, uh, so... Or... I, I, w I would have kept running with it myself, um, but then this idea took legs pretty fast, and I think it's got a lot more in it because I actually have somebody who can look at the stuff and say, "Well, that's not going to work. This is going to work." Instead of just going off on my own and like like a lot of people are doing, mm. I'm just pumping out this art. Whereas it, we have a bit of a structure now, and uh, it looks, in my opinion, infinitely better than what I was doing. So. Thanks to the technology that Geo has brought with scripts, et cetera. Love it. Great. No, that that's fantastic. I'm keen to see how this evolves. So I can see at the moment you're trying to grow the user base in terms of just getting it out there. How's that been going, Geo? I noticed the group, I noticed you got a lot of followers, but they're not translating into the Telegram. It's harder to push everyone into groups, isn't it? So I think, uh, right now, obviously, there's a lot of groups, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, really, you know, you kind of have to go to the groups to, to promote your stuff rather than forming your own group. And I mean, you know, you know, you know, with right. your stuff as well, it, it's very hard to, to get a, a group of people to come because, again, if you went to every single project's group, you'd be in a hundred, you know, telegram groups yeah. and getting messages and on hundred telegram groups every day. So the telegram stuff is not necessarily where we expected a lot of people to join. It just is convenient because that's what we're on all the time. Mm. And so, you know, we'll be posting some exclusives and running the Randy contest and <laughs> our raffles in there and stuff. But really Twitter, I think is, is where a lot of these NFTs really grow. Um, because it's not necessarily about, um, I guess, constant communication with people. It's just about releasing, you know, new things and getting people hyped up for new things and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and really, I mean, it, there should be, and, and there is, and I, I'm not a big fan of discord, you know, I'm on it. I'm in the craft channel on discord and all that kind of stuff. Um, really there should be more of a push to get a, a, a big disc or, or sorry, a big craft community together, um, where everyone can talk, you know, about their craft projects and all that kind of mm. stuff. And, and build up that sort of like icon bet right i mean icon bet is about all icon bet games you know it's not just about you know blackjack or it's not just about you know a uh, uh, slot you know it, it's about all of icon bet and that's kind of where i think craft should kind of go and push towards is hey you know instead of having all these separate channels you know on discord for all these nfts it's like why don't we keep a single entity and yeah it might get a little crazy every now and again but you know it's really uh, a good kind of way to to get everyone involved you know but you know they're they're handling it you know we're honestly they've got so much going on you know i i'm in constant contact with these guys you know probably multiple times a week um you know with just back end stuff and other such things you know cuz i'm trying to obviously get my nfts on there now and and all this kind of stuff and they're like we've got so many people using our site we're trying to just get it better and faster and mm. you know all that kind of stuff so it's kind of funny that you know with great success comes great issues sometimes so <laughs> yeah well well put um yeah. look i i tend to think uh yeah telegram's great and however i i kind of disagree there in terms of i think discord is the gradual once your project starts getting um 
it's going to have a lot of different people. I guess the NFT, you know, craft will have a variety of NFT projects that all aren't about pixels or, you know, gamification. Some will be like unique art. Um, and, you know, the Discord allows those channels to kind of create that for that community itself. And we're seeing, um, look, I don't know. At the end of the day, I get your point. You know, we, we're getting too many chats. There's too many groups to follow. Even I, you can see when I release an Eye and Icon episode, I just spam every group. <laughs> it's become, you know, it's that's how what you have to do to get, get your content across. But enough about that. I think let's come back to, to Pixels. I think I, I'm very excited. I think, Brian, you know, do you want to share a bit about um, what you mentioned, you know, working yeah. on Dragon Prince got uh, me intrigued. Do you, do you want to share a bit about your um, your career, your the stuff sure. you've done? I, I think that's really important because, um, yeah, I want to know. Um, I'm, I'm an animator yes. by, by trade, if you want to call it that way. Uh, working in the industry 10 years now, I think, in November. Or last year, maybe. Um, I'm from Ireland. Studied there. Studied in the UK. Went back to Ireland to work. Went back to the UK to work. Uh, bounced around between the two for a while, and then uh, came to Canada, Vancouver, uh, in 2014. And I've been here ever since. So seven and a half years, nearly now. Worked on all all TV stuff, uh, mainly Netflix, Disney Channel. Um, and what's the other one? Bit of Bob the Builder. Oh yeah. <laughs> the the, re, the revamp that wasn't as successful, but uh, yeah, basically working in animation. And now I work at this place called Icon Creative Studios in downtown Vancouver. I am as an animation director. Awesome. Man. And the last place I, before I came to the studio, I worked on Dragon Prince, which is uh, part of the discussion me and Gio had in, in the private message. Which you won an, an Emmy for, so that was nice. Yeah. yeah, that was a great show. Okay, cool. That that's awesome. I'm glad you you talked about about your background a bit. So uh, it, it's great for everyone to know what what's coming isn't is someone who's worked in the industry for a long time and has created yeah. something unique to them. Yeah, that's great. Not like that addict guy with his aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those aliens are hit, aren't they? Are oh. yeah, they're. They've got legs. Yeah. Happy, I, I got the men one, and that's all that matters. Of course. <laughs> cool. I guess. Okay. So, look, is there anything you want to close off with? I think this is great. We've gotten a real good idea. Um, it's great to hear that this is how it's kicking off. This is the randomization aspect. This is, uh, you know, you've got your commons, legendaries, rares, and then your uniques, um, which will be the one of ones. Fantastic. Is there anything else? And, and let's close out um, uh, everything to do with pixels. Anything else you want to call out? There's, there's just, you know, honestly, so much more that that Brian and I have talked about, you know, in, in private and stuff. And, you know, we're going to we're going to take it slow to start. You know, like I said, 696, which is actually kind of low in terms of, you know, like an NFT kind of thing, hmm. um, which will, you know, it, it will be grouped. So, you know, the commons will have 10 pixels of a certain animal and then each of those will have 10 of 10 and then you know uncommon will be five pixels of a certain animal and each of those will have five of five so you know in total i think there was something like uh 10 five so like 20, 21 10. 21 of the different animal oh. of the same animal of different color options and variety i guess we'd call it yeah so you know while it's not going to be a huge like you know, oh, we're, we're doing thousands, you know, like Nebula's got thousands of planets now, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, there are much bigger projects. So we're going to start smaller, but, you know, there's a there's a lot in the works to watch out for, for, for pixels. And really, you know, what we've shown is really just the pixel itself and, and, and a small part of everything that's going to be at the first release, so. Yep. No, look, very excited to see this grow and evolve. Um, cool looking forward to it we'll have you uh when you're ready to talk about the next component geo brian we'll have you back on the show to you know make sure i'm getting those exclusives you know how much i love it here <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and and definitely uh, you know thank you for having us here and thank you always for all the stuff you do for icon and and you know all the all the projects and and individuals that have come to icon so 
Oh, no, 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 thanks, Nita. Love doing this, so it's great. Thanks. Makes it easy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. In fact, you know, uh, I was, um, I've had eight weeks off, and this is all I was doing, and now I'm back to day job. Oh God, literally, got to, <laughs> it's it's hell. <laughs> it's hell trying to stay focused on something you don't care what, about. What? Is 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 rhizome not paying you enough or something? Come on! <laughs> no, no, they they look after me well, but um, yes, gotta. I'm not. I don't have my hands in enough yet to leave the day job. So yeah, no, no, I, I hear you there, and definitely that is obviously. I think everyone's goal here is to to do something they're passionate about, which I know Brian is passionate about art. So I mean, I don't, you know, he's. I even I've been trying to ask him how much will it take in pixels to get you to do it full time. And he, <laughs> I, you know, I like what I do and stuff. So I mean, yeah. some people are lucky enough to have the job they love and yep. you know, just, you know, they just don't want to just have all the free time. Cause honestly, I'll tell you, I have a lot of free time sometimes and I'm just like, I don't know what to do with myself. Gee, I'm going to come back to that. Brian, did you have something to say? No, it's just, uh, it would, uh, it'd have to match my waves, ways to get me to stop, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty tricky. <laughs> Well, cool. Look, Gia, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, chat to you about this lots of free time because you know if you have lots of free time, I want my poker sports bet. I want all these updates. Oh, oh there's so many things I want to ask you, but when, let's when leave it at pixels tomorrow, today. Tomorrow. So when I say free time, so you have to understand, and this is how the world works, and everyone doesn't get this, is that I'm not personally, literally programming all these things one on myself. Like you know, I have teams of people that are working on this stuff. Right. And so sometimes I have to wait for those people to deliver, you know, mm. at, you know, products to me. So it's not like I'm personally hands on programming, all this kind of stuff. Now I am working closely with a lot of these people and I do discuss things with them day. I mean, me and Brian talk pretty much every single day and I talk with my poker guys every single day and all that kind of stuff. So believe me, it's, it's not like there's nothing going on. I'm you know, just and staring, man. <laughs> my, my, my wife would argue that I definitely don't have a lot of free time. Um, but it's just more like again, when I get things started and I get people coming on board and, and they all start working on stuff. Now it's like, okay, well now I'm sitting here waiting for other people to deliver stuff to me. Hmm. And so that's what I consider free time, I guess. Obviously I have projects running. It's just a matter of like my actual time spent on, on doing stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, I love it. I love just, you know, cheekily. I hope actually you would answer you know give give some sneak peeks that's all i'm doing man fishing for exclusives you know me <laughs> i know and and hey i will tell you poker is in testing again people have been testing it and Ooh. um I, are you in the testing group i don't even know if you're in the testing no group. no I, I i know no news so look at me it's good it looks nice is it okay what? testing group come on i mean come don't on you have left- why aren't i in there what do i have to do <laughs> I mean, I guess more of these exclusives. Come on. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to hound you after this to get in the group. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, cool. guys. Thanks, guys. Look, really appreciate Thanks it, Brian. Much. It was great hearing from you. And I'm re- looking forward to this and also what else you got planned to, to launch, you know, on Craft and on Icon. So that's kind of exciting. It's good to have you on board. Cheers. Cool. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Okay, so we have with us today another artist who has found a lot of success in the NFT space and her partner as well as with us. So Sophie, why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, how you got into the NFT space. It's all the craze at the moment, especially with the craft store launching on Icon. It's just created a buzz of NFTs. Hey, um, yeah, thanks for having me. My name's Sophie, or otherwise known as Hondro, which is a little bit of a merge of my first and last name. So, yeah, um, I've been dabbling into art for a few years now, I guess probably from when I was really little, I kind of started, and I have Dave who's been trying to get me into this space for a few years now. I was always a little bit hesitant, a little bit nervous, but finally a few weeks ago I just bit the bullet and I started, and honestly I, I wish I had done it about two years ago when he first told me, but I'm really loving it so far. It's lots of fun. And yeah, it just gives me an opportunity to connect with new people and keep on doing what I love to do. So is this, and, uh, yeah, sorry. sorry? No, well, I was going to ask, so is this your first um, foray into the cryptoverse? 
It definitely is. I mean, I've been hearing a lot about crypto for the last three years. <laughs> Dave, he's like very heavily invested. He knows so, so, so much. A lot of the time, I, I barely know what he's saying, but I I think it's, it's really good now because I'm starting to put the pieces together and I can understand, you know, why he's so, I guess, addicted to everything and why he loves it so much. Um, maybe if you want to say hi, Dave. Hey, Fez. Thanks for having us on. That's uh, my pleasure, Dave. So, um, yes, look, full disclosure, I do chat to Dave offline a lot. Um, met him through Icon and he encouraged me to keep working hard with Iron Icon and all the content I was releasing. So um, this is just, uh, it's great to see that he finally succeeded to get his partner on board. <laughs> it's one of our biggest challenges, you know, getting our partners to kind of, you know, be interested in the cryptoverse. So um, great work, man. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great work to you as well. I'm a, a, a big time listener. I love tuning in. Um, you know, it's all, it's always a busy week over here. So being able to listen to this podcast allows me to have a, a full review of all the all the cool things that are going on. So I really appreciate uh, the work that you you two are putting on over there. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So uh, before Dave, I'm going to pick your brain in a second. But Sophie, I, I wanted to ask you. Before you ventured into, you know, you said you've been creating art for a while. Had you been trying to sell your art via the traditional manner? Um, you know, not NFTs or anything like that, just the stuff you created? Yeah, so um, I have tried. I, I wouldn't say that it's been a full-time focus of mine by no means. I mean, I do love to create. I work in marketing. I do a bit of photography and stuff like that, but you know, creating art was always something that I kind of just did on the side more so for myself, not really others. I mean, you know, it's great when people show that they love what I'm doing, but I, I mostly do it because I love to do it. Mm. So yeah, like in saying that, you know, I have done a few, a few pieces for like friends and family who have, have like, I've been lucky enough for them to purchase it. I, I have a few of my friends and family also have a few pieces hanging in their house. Mm. But, I mean, I haven't done anything really major with my art, I mean, it's always been a dream of mine one day to have, um, like, to do an ex art gallery, like, to be in an art gallery and have an exhibition. Like, that would be amazing. But to be honest, I think that maybe in one of these new metaverses or something like that, my art can probably be displayed one day. And I think that I'd be just as happy, if not more, doing something cool like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess that's what I was trying to uh, lead to, that if you looked at it from a traditional sense, what have you found? Was it harder to kind of get your work out there, you know, in the real world? Uh, or has NFTs and this cryptoverse created this completely new way of getting your work exposure and, uh, you know, people actually purchasing all your creations? Yeah. I guess it's like uh, it's completely different with the stuff that I've done. Um, like I guess in a traditional sense, it, it like I said, it has gone to friends and family. Mm. It wasn't really, I guess, easy for me to you know reach new people. I did. I guess I didn't really try. I don't have a website or anything for my art, and I wasn't really heavily pushing on it. But you know, since Dave told me, he's like, you know, you need to jump on Twitter. Like everyone's so nice. And, you know, I put my first collection up and I was lucky. Like, obviously, I had Dave. He purchased a piece of mine because I guess he had to. He loved me. <laughs> and I also had one of my best friends purchase a piece. And that was like, you know, I felt really, really happy about that. Yep. But I was super, super lucky. I had um, shout out to Q and Molly on um, Twitter. They, um, I guess they saw my work. They liked it. They shared it. And, you know, I woke up the next morning and I had no idea. And I woke up and, like, everything was sold. Oh, wow. And I was what the hell is going on? I had like a million notifications, like email notifications from OpenSea and I'm like, what has happened here? And then I found out that even like other artists, which I went and like looked at after, had bought it. And I'm like, holy shit, like, you know, actual artists are buying stuff from another artist. And I just yeah. realized everyone's so friendly and wants to help and wants to see people succeed. And I don't know, like, I'm not quite sure if it's as much like that in the real, like, real-world art sense, like physical prints and stuff like that. I don't think it's the same. Yeah. So, yeah, just really, I guess everyone is so loving and supportive and just wants to help. Like, have people giving me, you know, feedback and advice and stuff like that, which is really, really nice. Like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So you did your first drop on OpenSea, huh? Okay, that's great. And yeah, next. We have Craft next. <laughs> okay. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh, great, but good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> so, Okay. I guess, um, Dave, tell us how you are involved in the cryptoverse or what exactly do you do? 
Yeah, definitely. So my my background is marketing, um, more so digital media marketing. And I've had a business and I also work with Sophie. We both run this business together called Molotov Creative, uh, which is based in Sydney. So I've had that business for probably going on six years now. And in 2017, which was a year that I'd say a lot of people jumped into crypto, um, some at the some at the bottom and some at the top. Um, I, I started to just become completely obsessed with with this market and all of the different possibilities and all of the different use cases. And something that really stood out to me probably about a year and a half ago was just NFTs. Um, and, and not so much just for, you know, for art and collectibles, but for, for ticketing, um, for, for breaking up shares, for just, just this opportunity that you could have a, a global market with international liquidity and anyone could provide and anyone could, could benefit. Um, and, and the barriers were just, the barriers to entry are, are just, you know, limitless, um, when, when you look at, you know, who can get access to this. And I started to look in and study some of the things that were going on in like Southeast Asia, um, how, how people were using NFTs as just a form of, you know, almost escaping poverty. Um, and I got very excited about uh, this market. And about a year, a year and a half ago, I met uh, a business partner of mine. Uh, his name's Pete. He's also based in Sydney and his history and background was working in the entertainment uh, industry with many different cool brands from lacrosse to Nike to, you know, and, and different musicians. And we kind of looked at this opportunity and this idea to, um, to kind of look into how can we bridge entertainment and fashion and music and all of these brands and give them easy access into this uh, blockchain market through NFTs. So we did a, we did a, I guess you'd call it a marketing activation with Reebok, mm. uh, where together we created a um, a virtual stew, uh, sorry, a virtual uh, shoe, a virtual sneaker, um, with a uh, digital collective that we work with, and we put that out as our first NFT marketing activation. And since then, we've been working with other brands. Uh, we've been forming a couple of partnerships behind the scenes that I can't announce. Um, and yeah, I guess I guess that's that's been how I got into the NFT market. Yeah, that's cool. So not not a um, just someone who's been buying crypto and hoping you're right involved in the industry. Your literal business it revolves around this, and and you've had many successful ventures into the nft space no wonder sophie here you are he's persuaded you and got your art and not just on any platform first on open sea which is which is now your success story is brilliant and and well put put together i love hearing it that's great so you, you're now decided to kind of push into craft did, did dave have anything to do with this <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, Dave has been talking to me about Icon for so long now and I've always just, you know, asking questions and questions and questions trying to just get a better understanding. He's like, oh, you know, you should you should probably start, like, getting your right onto there. You know, the community is really nice. It'll be really good to, you know, put yourself out there and just, you know, have a go, see what it's like. So just been looking into it a little bit. Obviously having a conversation with you is fantastic. But, yeah, I just thought, you know, why, like, the time is now. Why not, you know, try and push through, push in? Cool. No, well, looking forward to it. Any, any, um, did you want to give the audience any descriptions of what you got planned to drop on craft? Um, yeah, we can give a, a little bit of a description, but I think that they might need to wait a couple, maybe a week before we really show them what it is. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know if you've seen my art maybe on OpenSea, but I really do love, um, colors a lot of my work is really really colorful i like you know um i like pop art i love i love abstraction cubism like i don't i wouldn't say that i really have one style like a lot of artists do have kind of one style that they stick with but you'll see with my work and obviously there's a lot that i haven't released yet but everything is quite different at times mm -hmm. 
So what I am going to start with um, is a pop art kind of piece. Um, I'm not going to say what the main part of it is, but um, it's going to be called Suck It Up and there'll be a few different colourful pieces which will be available. And I guess you guys will have to wait and see what they're going to look like. Cool. That does sound exciting. Can't wait to see it. And and I know we've been talking e- offline a little bit. We've got a bit of a um, promotional drop between yourself and I and Icon. So um, I think if everyone, whoever's listening, stay alert, we will drop that via Twitter and in our Telegram groups as well, um, what the competition will be. And it'll be just, you know, your typical simple competitions. All you need to do is like, follow, share, and boom, you could win one of these um, great pieces of art that Sophie has created herself. So um, that's exciting. I can't wait to I love a good... In fact, we've just started doing giveaways, so I'm getting a bit carried away thinking, what can I give away? I grab the lounge in the house and uh, the wife looks at me, but no, <laughs> you can't give that stuff away. Um, but- For me, it's cool, though, because it'll help me connect with a lot of different people, um, you know, in the Icon network as well. So I, I don't have too many people that um, are on Icon at the moment, so it would be good to, you know, start connecting and, you know, learning what they're all about as well. So I, I think that's great and a good call out because... Um, even if um, the artists that kind of have helped you in OpenSea and stuff like that, you can cross promote and go, oh, I've dropped some of my art on this platform. Um, we'll get great exposure to Icon as well. So it's a win-win for everyone. 100%. I'm keen. I'm excited. Excellent. Okay. Look, that's great. It was so, so glad to hear from you, Sophie. Uh, David, I know we've been saying this. It was great to finally get you on the show as well and uh, talk through a bit of your exposure in the crypto world. Um, any final closing words, Sophie? Um, I guess I'm just, yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait to show you guys a little bit more. Um, hopefully, you know, this goes really well. And even if it doesn't, I'm still going to be putting stuff up. So you guys will probably see a lot more weird artworks, different artworks from me really soon. Okay. We're looking we're excited. looking forward to it. Yes, we're excited as well. Excellent. Thank you, Sophie. Take care. Take care, David. Hey, thanks for having us on, Thank mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. No worries. See- Bye. Okay, and for our final segment in today's show, I have with us the creator of Pink Punks. Now, I'm, I'm kind of excited to hear his story. I have not asked him any questions before the show or anything like that because I want him to tell his tale right now so I can get, you know, you can hear my excitement and, and giddiness while he talks. So how are you today? <laughs> <laughs> really good, thanks. Thanks for, um, thanks for, thanks for thinking of us, Fez. We're, uh, yeah, happy, happy to chat, happy to tell our story. Although I'm not sure how exciting you might find the story, but uh, yeah, we'll try our best. <laughs> hey, I got to be excited. It's, it's, you know, people creating and, and bringing stuff on things that are built on Icon always gets me excited. So, so tell us what, what, what brought about Pink Punks? Like, obviously, you know, we got Pixel Punks and we got what that um, craze going on at the moment. So how did, how did this idea of Pink Punks come about? I mean, the, the concept, and I've, I've been kind of thinking about this long and hard because sometimes I think your your kind of best ideas just sort of arise from nowhere and you think, where did that come from? So I'm kind of looking back at this week thinking, why on earth did I come up with that concept? And I think the, the, the pure reason is, you know, we've seen the NFT hype happening on ETH and on OpenSea. And, and for me, you know, looking at OpenSea and looking at some of these crazy projects, it seemed like punks were the ones that, we're getting the kind of most traction, um, the most kind of hype. And I thought, you know, they look okay. And I know that, you know, the the original Lava Labs punks were created with an algorithm and 10,000 were pumped out. And I, I just thought we could do something a bit more bespoke, a bit more handcrafted uh, and make something a bit more kind of tailored to our community, you know, with the likes of avatars uh, and, you know, punks that people can actually relate to. So, um, so that was the vision really. Um, Fez to to make some punks that were a bit more kind of handmade, uh, spending a bit more time on them, and uh, yeah, really pleased with the result. And I think um, what I'm most pleased about is is how the ICX community have, have kind of uh, you know really got on board with us making them their own pink punks with the uh, with the likes of Min and uh, and and Rhizome. So yeah, super super happy. So so how long do you mind if I ask how long does it take? Because I recall even when we were chatting um, when you created my punk um you mentioned that you, you make them manually right they're not computer generated and i even gave you an image and, and you kind of tried to tailor it to 
to me. Um, so how long does it take? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> there are, you know, at the very start, you know, to be honest, my story is, I would say I am a creative, more musically, to be honest. So this kind of art craze, I'm not an artist by trade. Um, so a lot of this is is trial and error. And I'm sort of surprising myself with actually how, how good some of the pieces are looking. Um, <laughs> but but the process really, you know, it's it's pixel art. That's yeah. that's that's as simple as it gets. But I think there is ways to do it where it can look a bit more uh, refined and a bit more kind of artistic than some other um, projects. But, you know, each each punt, it, it really depends. Some I'm looking at the screen and I'm thinking ah, this just doesn't look right yet. You know, this just doesn't look right. And I'll spend, you know, 50 minutes, 30 minutes. But um, but anywhere between kind of, you know, an hour or, or even longer, certainly for those commissions, because. Uh, you know, with the likes of you, Fez, there was no way we wanted to make you a pink punk and you think, yeah, I'm not so sure. Uh, <laughs> so we wanted to make sure, you know, you were you were 100 percent happy. So. um, So, yes, the process can be super quick or it can be, you know, a lot longer. It really just depends kind of what what flow we're in uh, and the kind of complexity of the punk. But um, but yeah. Cool. So um, obviously you've been an iconist for a while. Yeah, I, I was in, uh, well, since 2017, um, like like a lot of people, I think, um, on the craft network, I think, uh, you know, if you're using dApps like this, perhaps you have a, a vested interest in Icon to, to want to see it succeed. And maybe you've been in from the start because you've, you know, r- <laughs> ridden that journey from the top to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we're just trying to do it. <laughs> we're trying to do the best to, uh, to get that price back up. And I think engaging with these new dApps. Uh, and just kind of contributing to that network effect is something that that we wanted to see. So, um, so yeah, I've, I've been in since 2017. Um, you know, there may have been a year or so where, you know, I was kind of keeping my ear on the ground, but not really too heavily involved in what was going on. But it, it feels like right now with this NFT craze and with the likes of, you know, Balance launching, Arm on the Way mm. or, or Ohm, however you like to say it, <laughs> uh, and Craft, you know, we're, we're right back in there. Yeah, agree. So... Uh... Uh, tell us with pink punks how many will there be in total what's the final number uh so 1000 is the absolute oh, okay. maximum supply that will ever be available but yeah the... we um you know we looked at the, yeah we looked we looked at the market and we saw you know there were i think for me when i was looking at other punk projects and and i saw that there were you know 10000 firstly it seemed like that's a lot of punks to be putting on a market such as you know craft when it is in its early infancy um and i think that could saturate you know what we're doing uh and secondly we're creating these ones by hand <laughs> so yeah, yeah. uh so that's a that's a lot of work and i think you know what seems to be going down right well right now is that we're we're kind of drip feeding the market with our creations every day you know maybe maybe five or six a day keeping uh you know keeping it fresh and exciting and not just dumping a load of you know half efforted punks on the market for people Mm. just to pick one up because they think you know it's a it's a speculative investment we want people to to you know get a pink punk because you know they relate to the one that they're looking at or they want to to buy one to set it as their profile photo uh you know it's it's just a bit more than buying a a random algorithmic punk because you think you can uh, make a, a lot of money on it Cool. So uh, I guess if um, a lot of people already have punk, so is there a way to follow? Have you got a Discord channel? What what What's in ways of mediums to engage yeah. with the community? Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing is we started this project uh, eight days ago and it seems to have kind of blown up in that space already. We started the Twitter um, last Monday. We've already got over 500 followers, which might seem <laughs> like not so great to, to some of you, but but to us that uh, that's really great because the community is so engaged uh, always commenting on on our new creations so um yeah we're on twitter we're at pink punks art um we're also on discord uh the link is in our bio um i think that's i think that's it and of course you'll find us on craft um as as one of the hot collections on there and actually i think we are now the top seller of the past 7 days which again seems utterly mad to uh to say, considering we've only been doing this for a week, so uh, so yeah, we're 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 just really humbled, to be honest. No, that that's brilliant, well deserved. Do you mind if I ask how you, you mentioned your team? How big is your team? 
Uh, there's 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 two of us. So um, it's 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 me and a. I, I'm kind of in charge of the Twitter and doing some of the kind of final stages of the creations, and we we have a, another guy who is kind of working on those kind of. I'd say base levels of kind of getting the templates and getting the just the meat and bones of each punk ready, uh, and then we can add the finishing touches to the end. And you know, we also have <laughs> an ideas man because uh, uh, you know, one thousand punks is is I guess you would say quite small in terms of max supply, but um, but to have a punk that is unique and individual a thousand different times we need to have good ideas too. We don't want to be you know putting punks out on the market which you know don't really. Uh, generate much interest we want them to be fun and exciting so yeah uh, yeah small team no great so you know i i i'm never content with just this any inside scoops on the next project or at the moment it's just pink punks have you you know <laughs> what, what are you going to build on on top of that <laughs> Yeah, we've been we've been thinking about this. I think pink punks is good for now. I think in the future there could be you know more themed um, punks that we release. Um, we've been testing the market, testing some kind of creations that we've made in the past couple of days. You would have seen the Santa Claus punk uh, release, which seemed to be going down quite well. So I think we could see you know um, themed punks based on the the season. Um, but I also think. We've also done some commissions of celebrities, um, which went down really well. So, um, and we've just released the Ziggy Stardust Pink Punk, which uh, which generated a lot of uh, interest. So, I think you know celebrities is is one route that we could go down, mm. um, but but each being unique, to their own style, and, and certainly not wanting just to make something simple um, for speed of putting it to the market. We want to make sure that they are, um, you know, still artistically pretty strong. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, we've got some we've got some good ideas up, up our sleeve. We're we're going to be working with another um, NFT creator on craft, um, which you should you should see on our Twitter in the next few days. Um, a really exciting uh, giveaway. So watch this space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, considering we've been operating for a week, I'm sure there'll be more in the works in terms of uh, of different themes. But for now, we're just going to be sticking with what we know. Yeah, great. Look, very excited to see um, what you keep uh, putting out there. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned this commission commission. So at, at the moment, that is a way for anyone in the community to kind of reach out and go, we want a custom pink punk made, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, that, that only really appeared to us kind of three or four days in. We were making pink punks and people were buying them. But then, you know, all of a sudden, my Twitter DMs just started taking off and, and people said, you know, could you make one for me? And I thought about it and said, yeah, of course, um, you know, send us a photo. Um, and that started really with with some P reps. Um, you know, Brian Lee was one of the kind of early commissioners and Fez, we've made one for you uh, and some of the other guys at Rhizome. Um, and, and to be honest, we're much more comfortable making uh, commissions because I guess, number one, you guys want that and you want to be setting that as your profile photo and, and pushing the pink punks name out there um and also it's it's kind of it's much more refreshing from our point of view of doing something super original and super bespoke for the community um if if that kind of resonates with you that yeah. certainly resonates with us yeah no it does excellent okay well look thank you so much for coming on the show i um uh, i've had a great experience just listening to everyone's um you know stories of how they got involved and how um it's just a dap that gets launched has captured creativity that probably you know a month ago we all would not have been thinking along those lines personally so it's great to see that happen um yeah it, it was great to have you on the show thank you for coming on thanks so much Fez. Cool. And look, that's it for the episode, everyone. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share it around. This is a great medium for people who aren't into crypto, where the number go up, acquire tokens, DeFi. This is different. It's art. It's music. You know, get your work out there. What a great way to do it. So um, if you think you know someone who could benefit from it, send them to the craft store why well you don't have to worry about fees it's so cheap to mint and do things on there um you can do it right away so let's let's kick off this craze and let it keep going i say thanks thanks for joining us man take care thanks cheers thanks